When I started my career journey, I wanted to work in sports analytics as soon as possible. Ever since I was young, I really liked statistics, I liked math, and I loved sports. And so it was really my dream to go and work for a top team, especially in soccer. I wanted to work for FC Barcelona, go and cook asados with Messi and the boys, drink some mate. And like a lot of other people, a lot of the people that I interact with, a lot of the students that I teach in my courses, their dream is to work for a team, work for an organization that does sports analytics. A couple of months ago, I had a really cool conversation with an acquaintance who was working in sports and had been working in sports for a long time. And it kind of confirmed a couple of my thoughts about the skills required to work in sports analytics and how we should go about learning those skills. So in this video, I'm going to dive into three things of how to actually learn sports analytics. And this isn't you know, the what you should be learning. It's more the how you should be learning sports analytics. And so the reason I'm sharing this is because I am currently working on these skills to hopefully make that jump into sports analytics at some point in my life, whether that be working for a team, an organization, starting my own business, right, within sports analytics. And so that is why I'm actually going to show how you can not only learn these skills, but actually be good at the job when you do make that jump. And so my first tip is to number one, don't actually go straight into sports analytics. This is what I did. This is what a lot of other people have done. And the truth for that is because sports analytics is very competitive right now. And it probably will be for a long time. I mean, if you go on LinkedIn or you go on any sort of job posting for a, you know, a data scientist job at a team, there's going to be hundreds or maybe even thousands of applicants. Sometimes those applicants are going to be very underqualified. And a lot of times they're going to be way more qualified than you might feel or currently be at. And really, this is the same whether it's a low level entry job in sports or it's a super high level job. There's just going to be a lot of competition. And so the biggest mistake I think a lot of people make when they're trying to get into sports analytics is trying to jump into working in sports analytics too quick or too fast. And a few years ago, I knew a guy, we'll call him Greg. And Greg was fresh out of an undergraduate degree and he wanted to go work in sports analytics. So he started to apply to a bunch of different jobs and Greg just kept getting rejected and rejected and rejected. And that was because he had a lack of industry knowledge and a lack of the technical skills, and as well, he had a lack of work experience. This guy, Greg, he was actually me. When I first came out of my undergraduate degree, I thought that I could just go jump straight into working for a team. And while this might be true in some cases, most people will benefit a lot more from going and working a job that is not in sports so they can learn the skills, gain experience, and gain that kind of knowledge and technical skills that are needed for working in sports analytics and sports in general. And maybe that's working for, you know, a big industry company or just a small startup. Any way that you can gain skills and learn skills, gain that work experience is going to benefit you tenfold in over those who are just trying to go straight from school to sports analytics. And I've been working for a startup for the past three years as a data engineer. And this has really exposed me to a lot of different skills, technologies, and experiences that I wouldn't have been able to get if I just tried to go straight into sports analytics. Truth be told, I feel a lot more confident right now, four years after I've graduated, to go make the jump if I wanted to into sports compared to at that point. And just remember that a career is long. If you're 22 years old, it does not mean that you are a failure if you are not working in sports by the time you're 23. Just keep gaining experience and keep working towards that goal. And so the second way to learn the skills for sports analytics is to really focus on the technical skills. And when I say technical skills, I'm really talking about learning how to code, learning how all the databases, cloud infrastructure works, because this is what is going to power the sports analytics department, whether that be for a club, a team, an organization. So learning those technical skills is going to be crucial because it's going to set you apart from the people who don't know those technical skills or aren't as advanced as you might be. And almost everyone I know that works in sports analytics has very good technical skills. They're very good with Python or R and SQL, and they have a really good understanding of things like cloud computing, web design, training different models for algorithms. And so the hard truth about learning sports analytics is that you're competing with a lot of people and these 
technical skills are what are going to set you apart. And so for example, we can look at this job posting from the US men's national team a couple of months ago. And really of the first five things in the minimum qualifications, three of them are different technical skills. So data visualization, coding, and databases. And what I recommend doing every time you see one of these job postings of something that you're maybe interested in is that you go and look at what the qualifications are so you can start to understand what you should be focusing on when you're learning sports analytics. And that will really help you understand, okay, this is what teams are looking for. Where am I lacking with these skills and how can I improve these skills as well? And really learning these skills is going to be a lifetime endeavor. It's going to be something that you're gonna to have to do for the rest of your life. So I would recommend starting as soon as possible and it's usually very cheap. For example, you can learn stuff for free on YouTube as well. If you want to go the paid route, you can get very cheap courses. And I do teach these technical skills in my complete football analytics in Python course, which you can get in the link in the description. If you use the code YouTube, you can get 25% off as a way to say thanks for watching this video. And really you should be trying to learn every day. And the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it as well. And so the third idea is that we want to be building in public. And so this idea actually comes from a movement on Twitter. You might have seen where a lot of these solopreneurs or indie developers are building and just sharing what they're building. And these guys are building software, they're building tools, they're marketing, they're creating content, and then they're sharing all of that on Twitter. And what this is doing is, is allowing them to get users, to get feedback, to really start building their portfolio of tools and ideas and businesses. And so for sports analytics and learning sports analytics, we kind of take the same idea, but a little bit different of an approach to it. And what I mean by build in public is build a portfolio of projects, build a portfolio of ways to share your ideas, share your analysis and share what you're learning publicly. And the reason why we do this is because when we're sharing this information in public, we're getting quick feedback and constant feedback on our ideas, on our analysis. And it's a lot easier to improve your skills when you're getting feedback than when you're just living in a box by yourself. And this is how I first started learning sports analytics. I started just tweeting out stuff that I was working on, on Twitter, started sharing on YouTube things that I would learn and then I would try to teach them to other people. And what this has done is this allowed me to learn the skills that I need to work in sports analytics and as well it's allowed me to grow a network of people who are already working in sports analytics who find interest in what I've actually been doing and it's just opened a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have had if I had just been trying to apply to jobs for example. And building in public and sharing work has paid off exponentially for a lot of people. I know a lot of people who have just shared information on Twitter, shared their analysis and then they've gone on from doing that, they've learned the technical skills and now they're working for large teams, organizations or different clubs, right? Some of them are working for large pro organizations. Some of them are working for really big teams in soccer. Other ones are working in the NBA. And this is just a couple of examples. And there are plenty of other people who I actually don't know who have done the exact same thing. And so that is why sharing your analysis, building in public and sharing information is going to be crucial for you to really get to that next level of learning sports analytics and really learning sports analytics it's not something that is going to happen you know within a couple of months it might take a couple of years it might take you know five ten years but with consistency with time you can actually learn these skills that are required to learn sports analytics whether you're doing it to pursue it as a career or just doing it to learn as a new hobby or a new skill set to have so if you want to get some ideas of projects that you can start building go ahead and watch this video it'll take you through some projects that you can start building to actually start learning sports analytics.